Thanks for coming out here today. My name is Jesslyn, and I'm a technical product manager at Control Labs. Now, a huge reason I'm here at Control Labs is because as an XR developer and as a human being, I felt let down by a lot of the commercial XR input devices available out there today. I've spent enough time in this medium to believe in its expansive potential, but I feel like if we want to give XR a meaningful chance at a successful future, we need to really re-examine our interactive toolkit. And I'm sure many of you guys share my frustration with current things in XR. For example, I feel like we're limited by our controllers. Have you ever noticed that a lot of commercial XR controllers are kind of remote shaped? So you can't really do something like, let's say pick up something big and round like a basketball, because let's say you wanted to do that with an Oculus Touch controller. You'd reach out, press a trigger with your index button, and then if you wanted to throw this basketball, you would throw your hand up, but release the index button, but like it, it doesn't feel intuitive, and the entire time you're holding something that's rod shaped, and that just feels weird. Or do you ever think about how ergonomically absurd it is that we have to hold our hand out in front of our face every time we want to do something meaningful in XR? There's just a lot of arm fatigue there. And also, what's up with typing in XR? Have you ever had to like type your password in using HoloLens and it's like, click, click, <laughs> click, and it's just, it's so slow and it's so frustrating. So there has to be a better way. We have a massive opportunity to rewrite interaction paradigms about how we interact with virtual environments. And a lot of my frustrations with the way things are in XR today is what brought me to Control Labs. Control Labs is an interdisciplinary team of scientists, engineers, and designers. And we're focused on eliminating the barrier between machines and the human nervous system. We imagine a world where computers are natural extensions of thought and movement. Because our brains and our thoughts are so high bandwidth, we process a remarkable amount of sensory information every single second. And yet, the way we interface with the world is so low bandwidth, whether we're interacting with the physical world using our limbs to touch things, or interacting with the, with the virtual world using our limbs to control our mouse, keyboard, Xbox, Xbox controller, um, and using that as digital input. Even things like eye tracking and like voice commands, there's only so many words I can get out of my mouth at any given time. Simply put, it's just not, it just doesn't capture the richness and potential of what we have to work with. And it's super low bandwidth, and w there's a lot being lost here. So we wanted to create a universal controller, because what if we weren't limited by our devices or by our bodies, but instead by what our nervous system could do? And that's why we created Control Kit. Control Kit is a device that sits on your arm, a little bit like a watch. And we focus on the hand because it's the most densely innovative part of the human body. The electrodes read your EMG signals from your skin, and we feed that information through machine learning algorithms to extract signal from that noise. Now, as a developer, you plug that into your applications or your projects, and suddenly you have a whole host of new data to work with right at your fingertips. And the cool thing about this is that it's non-invasive, so there's no suits, no gloves, it's untethered, so you don't have to be attached to your big computer. And in fact, you don't even need a big, expensive computer to do this. And since we don't use cameras, you don't have to deal with occlusion, right? And you don't have to deal with all that kind of latency that's associated with, compu uh, with um, computer vision-based solutions. And unlike most brain-machine interfaces, you don't have to go to surgery and kind of implant something into your brain to make this work. But more importantly, you don't have to wear this big cap with wires coming out of it, because let's be real, who wants to wear that in public, right? So, now that we have this, what can you do with this? Well, what if you could bring your hands into virtual environments and faithfully interact with the virtual world the way you'd interact with the real world? So, this is kind of an old video, so the device looks a little bit different today, but what you're noticing is that he doesn't have, this is my coworker, he doesn't have to hold anything. So he's not limited by the shape of the controller or the positioning of buttons. He's no longer limited by the controller, so he's no longer playing the controller. He can, for the first time, play the actual game. So we freed ourselves from having to conform to a controller, and that opens up all different types of experiences that we can finally build. To go back to the basketball example, it's now fun, or like we're, it's now possible to be able to hold something in a virtual environment that's shaped like a basketball that's not rod-shaped. And because we're not using cameras, there's no reason why your hand has to stay in front of your face. They can be in your pockets, on your side, resting on your desk. 
so you can finally say goodbye to arm fatigue. And with neural interfaces, you can map anything to anything, really. So you can map any kind of like letter to any kind of neuron fire. Imagine if you could get rid of your phones and your keyboards as input devices for text. Turn any surface into your keyboard, whether it's your table, like in this video, That's pretty cool. Or the palm of your hand. Like imagine being in VR with a VR HMD on where you can't see anything and being able to type just using the palm of your hands. I think that'd be really cool because finally we have a way to type quickly. Well, what about things that don't even map to big gestures and movements? How about things like detecting muscle tensions? To a camera, this soft grasp and this hard grasp look exactly the same. But to EMG sensors, they can pick up the different nuanced neuron pattern fires, and these look wildly different. And what's cool about this is that it's able to finally differentiate between varying levels of muscle tension. So suddenly you get a whole dimension of continuous control that you couldn't possibly get with computer vision-based solutions. Imagine manipulating an art piece, an interactive art piece, without having to move. So let's take this one step further. What if you could finally manipulate objects at a distance? Have power over the magnitude in which this block flies towards me. So in this case, I'm pulling slowly, and then I'm suddenly pulling really, really fast. And all I really did was just tense a little bit more. And that feels like force control. I feel like I'm in Star Wars. It feels like magic. Here's a video of a coworker again intending to open his hand, but not actually opening his hand. The device is able to pick that up, and is able to work out his intention to open his hand. So what we've effectively created here is intention capture. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what we call adaptive control. And I think this is one of the coolest things that Control Kit gives you. So Control Kit reads your neuron fires, right? Instead of like what your body or what your hand is actually doing. So with adaptive control, this thing could learn you. So let's say I wanted to program a D-pad. I could program it to, let's say, my wrist angle, like up, down, left, right. I could map it to, say, to my finger, so up, down, left, right. Or I could just do this, and this is up, down, left, right. I'm like flexing my muscles a little bit differently and firing and isolating different neurons. And it's able to, um, it's able to work at that control mapping. So whatever control mapping, whether continuous, discrete, big and obvious, or subtle, it reads all that, and it learns that. So what does this mean? Well, what if you truly didn't have to make any big movements to control things? So I think that this is kind of a cute video, but what we have here is someone being able to play the Dino Runner game without having to move at all. And his hand doesn't even have to be there. He could just cross his arms and just put his hands wherever he wants, and he's able to isolate the neuron and trigger it and control this Dino Rider game. Now, if this learns your neuron fire patterns, you could map neuron fire patterns to anything, say to control limbs that you don't even have. So we gave this device to one of our scientific advisors. And like you or me, he was able to control you know, like the virtual hand the way any normal person would. But the difference here is that he never actually had a fully developed left hand. And yet he's able to finally control all these fingers and all these limbs that he never even had. Imagine being able to finally build experiences that transcend what our limbs are capable of. You see here that he's also able to control grasp, even though he physically cannot grasp. And he's able to like, finally control the level of grasp. So all of this is done without a camera over a dynamic range, predictably, reliably. And this is a huge game changer, not only for XR, but for how we fundamentally interact with our machines, games, robots, cars, art installations, whatever. And this feels like the future to me. <laughs> so what's next? Well, we're currently taking applications for our independent developer program. So if you're someone who has an appetite for this, someone who's ready to get their hands dirty with neural interfaces, we'd love to hear from you. You can go to controllabs.com to sign up for our waitlist. Everything I just showed you is possible today with Control Kit. And I'm super excited to see what kind of things the creative tech community builds with this. Thank you.